So in this video, we're going to look at some actual examples of applied optimization problems. The first one we're going to look at is an example of where we take a piece of paper, we're going to cut squares from the corners, and then we're going to make a box and try to maximize the volume for that. So here is our problem. We have an open top box that's going to be made by cutting squares from the corner of a 12 by 18 centimeter sheet of paper. And then we're going to bend the corners or the edges up. And we want to try to find out how large should the squares be so that we can maximize our volume. So here's kind of an example of what our picture is going to look like. And we know that the original dimensions are 18 by 12. So let's take a moment. We're going to look at an applet that will allow us to kind of visualize what's happening to our volume function. So we're going to take this applet and we're going to change it to the dimensions that we have so we can watch what's happening here to the um, function. So let's change the dimensions in the problem. We said we were going to have an 18 by 12 sheet of paper that we're cutting corners off that are going to be in the shape of a square and then fold up. And notice that it defaults to letting our corners be a half an inch or half a centimeter in this example since we're doing centimeters. And here is a graph of our volume function. And then below that is a graph of our derivative of V prime. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my slider and see what happens to the volume as I do that. So notice that as I'm moving the slider up, you can see that my tangent line is moving along with that. And I can see that my volume is increasing. And then right around in here, we start to level off and hit a maximum. And then my volume will start decreasing. And my job is to try to figure out what happens at this point up here where we were trying to figure out the point where this is going to maximize. So if I look at the problem, it looks like it occurs maybe right around there at 2.334. But if I look at my derivative, I can see that my derivative is 1.29. So I would like for that to be zero if that's actually the tangent line slope is my derivative, then that would be zero at my maximum. So let's just move my cursor a little and see what happens. So let's try backing it up. And if I back it up, it actually got my derivative got higher. So let's move forward. And now we can see that at that point, my derivative is now dropped negative. So let's just top in a few numbers. And let's try 2.387. And notice that my derivative is still negative, but it's smaller than it was a minute ago. So we'll go to Points, or 2.36, let's try 2.35, and now we've passed from a negative number to a positive number, so I know that somewhere between there is where I hit zero. So let's try 2.355, and we've dropped down again to a negative slope. So we'll back that up and go to a 4, and we're at a positive slope. And we can set and keep guessing numbers until we get that to be as close to 0 as possible. But let's go ahead and say that it's around 2.354 will be our um, value for x that will maximize our volume. And in just a minute, we're going to work this problem out algebraically. And we want to remember that that's the number that we came up with when we looked at just the applet. So back to our problem, we said that we knew that the side of our box was going to be 18 by 12 for our original dimensions. But once we cut off the squares, we now need to adjust for that when we make our, our, our box three-dimensional. So now this distance will be our original 12 minus the two sides that we, or the two squares that we cut off, so that'll be 12 minus 2x. If I now look at this side, that was originally going to be 18, but again, I've cut the two squares from the corners, so that distance now becomes 18 minus 2x. So we've taken our picture and we've labeled all the sides. Now what I want to do is write an equation for what we want to maximize or minimize. 
So I want to try to find the maximum volume. And we know that volume is given by length times width times height when we're looking at a rectangular prism. Now, using this problem and the dimensions that I have here, the length is going to be 18 minus 2x. The width is going to be 12 minus 2x. And then the height is just going to be x. Now, if we take a moment and go ahead and expand that, and you can pause the video if you need to, then we're going to get 216x minus 60x squared min or plus 4x cubed. Now, once I get the equation for what I want to find the maximum or minimum for, the next thing would be to take the derivative. So if I find v prime, I'm going to get that v prime is going to be 216 minus 120x plus 12x squared. Now, I have to set that equal to 0 to get my critical points. Now, by solving that, either by um, trying to factor, and if you do that, you're going to see you can factor a 12 out and get 18 minus 10x plus x squared, but that doesn't factor, so we would have to do quadratic formula, or you can use a graphing calculator. We're going to get that our x values, once we solve that equal to 0, we're going to get our x values are 2.354 and 7.645. Now that actually could be 646 depending on whether you round it or not. So those are my two critical points and I need to now test those and my endpoints to find my maximum. Well the endpoints would be that smallest and largest value that I could have for x. Well, the smallest value I could have for x would be 0, but that wouldn't be reasonable for the problem because then I wouldn't have a box to fold up. And the largest value I could have for x would be 6. Since the smallest side is 12, the largest you could cut in would be 6 from each side, which is also going to eliminate two of my values now. So that actually gets rid of the total of three values, x is 0, because that's going to not make this form a box. x is 6 would also not be reasonable because you would just cut your paper in half. And then 7.645 is too big. So the only reasonable value I have is 2.354. So I can test this now by using the second derivative test. If I take the second derivative, then I'm going to get negative 120 plus 24x. But then if I substitute in my 2.354, then that's going to end up giving me a negative value. And by the second derivative test for maxes or mins, I know that my critical point now is my maximum. So then if I want to maximize the volume, then I need to let x, the side of the square, be 2.354 centimeters and that will give me a box that has the maximum volume.